The majority of the time when you're working with Sibelius, you will be working with a full score, which means that you can see all the parts in your score at the same time. This obviously makes sense whenever you're, when, you're, when you're writing music for multiple instruments, but it's worth remembering that even if you're only writing out a single part, you're still working on a full score. Once your score's finished, however, you then should really look at working with the parts. And it doesn't take an awful long time to create a full set of orchestral parts or band parts for your score. And most of the work is done from this V cross, this V plus sign over here. If you click on there, it will give you a list of all your parts that you have available for your score. That list there is the same list as all the instruments in your score down there. To look at one of the parts, you simply click on its name and it shows you it there. Once you have a part open, you can quickly switch between the part and the score by using the keyboard shortcut W. Like so. Notice, however, that the part is on a separate tab along the top here. And you can open as many tabs as you like. I could open a second trombone. I could open any of these parts. That's a little trip apart. And let's say the capacitor part. There you go. And they're all on separate tabs there. And again, W will take me back to the score. Full score here. And W again will take me back to the last part I was looking at. So let me have a quick look at the trombone part. I just want to explain the difference between a part and a score. First of all, if you look at the score, all the instrument names are down the side beside each instrument. If I look at a part, the instrument name is up here at the top, where you would expect it to be. If I look at a score, the rests, the bar rests, are single bar rests. If I look at a part, they're grouped together into what are called multi-rests. The score really doesn't take an awful lot of notice about um, page turns, because as far as the score is concerned, every day is different. So everybody has a different amount of music on the page. However, the parts specify what is a good place, if possible, they specify what is a good place to turn the page. So the player can have time to get the page turned and ready to play the start of the next page. It will do that, Sibelius will do that, if at all possible. Depending on the music, there may not be a chance to do that, but it does its best. So these are the main differences between the score and the parts. Oh, one thing, other thing to point out, um, if I go back to the score, any transposing instruments, of course there aren't any in this score, but any transposing instruments will be transposed properly in the part as well. No matter what type of score you're looking at. If you're looking at a transposing score or a non-transposing score, you will be looking at a transposing part. So the part will be transposed correctly for you all the time as well. Now that in itself is nice, but there's one other very important feature about Sibelius. Let me point at this note here, the first note in the first trombone part. It's an F sharp. Let me zoom in so you can see better what I'm doing. If I go to the score, go over here to find the first note trombone part, then it's there. You can see it's the same note, obviously. However, if I change that note, for some reason, I'm going to change it up to there, make it a B, on the score, that's changed as well. The parts are linked to the score, so any changes you make in the score are reflected in the part and vice versa. So if I, for example, on the full score, change this note on the second bar up to there, on the score, oh sorry, on the part, that's changed back as well. These are all part of the same file and it's a technique that Sibelius calls dynamic parts. Any changes you make on the part are reflected in the score and vice versa. So of course when you're looking at a part, it's a Sibelius file, so you can do anything that you can do in the score, you can do with the part as well. So you can add notes, you can change notes, you can add bars, you can add signs, you can add lines, you can add anything you like, and those changes will be reflected in the score. Some of the differences to be aware of are usually to do with layout. So see how the trombone one title there and this are in different colours? 
that indicates that this is different from the score. And obviously that's going to be different. This is slightly different laying out as well because it'll be slightly higher to make sure it doesn't clash with this. But your, score, your parts generally look the way you would expect as a player, the way you would expect your parts to look. They don't usually require any great amount of editing. So everything we've been doing so far is from this list here. However, we have a parts tab. Now, looking at the items on the parts tab, you'll notice that there's quite a few things on there that you wouldn't really use. For example, the extract option. What that will do is it will create a separate file for one or more of the parts. But the problem with that is that any changes that are then made afterwards are not reflected in, in, in the score or in the parts. So why would you want to do that when you can do it from here? When they are reflected, any changes are reflected then. So I'm struggling, I have to say, to see the benefit of having that option there. Similarly, with the print option here, you would tend to do the prints from the file tab. And you can choose what parts you want to print, how many copies you want, etc. from there. So again, why would you want to do that? There is, however, one feature in this tab that you will want to use at some point, and it's this one here, the new part. What this lets you do, if I click on there, it lets you create a new part, and you can decide what which of these um, parts will go into your new part. Very often it's used for percussion players. So, for example, you might have a single player who plays more than one instrument at different times in the score. Well, rather than having to worry about two separate pieces of music, it's better to put those parts onto the same score. So I can take, for example, the triangle part, put that across, and the maracas part, put that across. Click OK. And there's my new part that's been created for triangle and maracas. So it means that the player is then just looking at a single piece of paper with both parts on it. Obviously you wouldn't use this one because you can't play both at the same time. But you get the idea. The other um, benefit of using that option is if you're writing for guitar and uh, notation and tab, you can put them both in the same part as well. So, that's a quick overview of looking at the parts. Um, the, the most important part of that is to remember that when you're looking at a score, it's not the same as looking at a part. So if you're only writing out for one instrument, it's a good idea to use the part to print from rather than the score.